Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. In this video, we're going to talk about the science behind the gypsum products that we use. This is gypsum. A friend of mine's a geologist and he gave me this. It comes in a rock form. This is a sliver that came off of a larger rock he had in his collection. And you can see it's got a real nice crystalline structure. Now this is mined in quarries in different places around the world. Now, gypsum comes from another mineral called anhydrite. And anhydrite is calcium sulfate. And it's calcium sulfate, and it looks like this. There's the calcium atom, and here's the sulfate molecule. Now, an means without, hydra means water. So this is, this anhydrite mineral is gypsum without the water. Now, anhydrite is only found in arid regions, and it's in a crystalline structure too, and it's a hydroscopic mineral, which means it attracts water. It really, really wants a drink of water. In fact, it wants desperately to have two water molecules. So when it gets those two water molecules, it looks like this. It's calcium sulfate dihydrate. Calcium sulfate, and then it's got two water molecules attached to it. And here it is right here. Here's the anhydrite, and here is the hydrated hydration of that um, of that molecule with two water molecules. Now this is the gypsum. So a lot of times when they mine the the gypsum they will find anhydrite with it. And a lot of collectors who will have anhydrite in their collection will turn into gypsum if it's in a humid environment. It will actually pull those water molecules out of the atmosphere and attach them to the anhydrite uh, uh, calcium sulfate. All right, so how do you get from this to this? This is what we use. Well, they heat this up. Because this has two water molecules attached to every calcium sulfate molecule, they heat it up to 150 degrees Celsius or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, cakes are baked at like 350, so it gives you something to relate to. And this drives off 75% of the water, and you end up with calcium sulfate hemihydrate. So it's calcium sulfate, and instead of two water molecules, it's got half a water molecule. Well, half a water molecule doesn't really exist, so really technically what this is, it's two calcium sulfate molecules sharing one water molecule. So it's calcium sulfate hemihydrate. It's also called plaster of Paris. And the reason they call it that is because in the early 18th century, they found a huge gypsum quarry just outside of Paris, France. And this is what started all this chemistry that we're talking about today. And so they affectionately call it plaster of Paris. Now, when you heat this up and it's pulverized, you get this, but the method by which you heat this up determines whether it's going to be plaster or stone or dye stone. There's a couple different types of plaster. Then there's dental stone, which is what this is. This is what most labs use. And then there's the couple different types of dye stone. So the heating process will determine the crystalline structure that will make it either one of those three. Now a manufacturer will come in and they will put additives in to affect the color, the hardness, setting time, and other factors. So when this is mixed up with water, you're, what you're doing is you're rehydrating a hemihydrate and turning it into the dihydrate again. But it's not going to be this dihydrate, it's going to be whatever the manufacturer has engineered it to look like as a final product. Now this, if, if you were to, that this is this set up. So this is, you know, water's been added to this, it's been mixed up, poured into a mold, and you end up with this, this model here. So if you were to analyze this on a microscopic level, you would see a crystalline structure to it. Now what happens, when you go from the hemihydrate to the dihydrate, you're going from a liquid to a solid. So when you mix this up with water, you get a slurry mixture, a liquid slurry. And then when it sets up into this, it turns into a solid crystal. Now all matter, no matter what it is, has kinetic energy in it. 
and this energy is stored in the form of the motion of its atoms and molecules. So in the liquid state, that motion is, is free. Those atoms and molecules can move around freely, but when it turns into a, a solid, especially like a crystal solid, a very strong, rigid solid, it slows that motion down a whole lot. And when it does, it releases that kinetic energy in the form of heat. So that's why when you pour these up, toward, especially toward the end of the setting time, it gives off all that heat. It's in the form of released kinetic energy. All right, that's the basic science of the gypsum products we used. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.